Hello students, it is a pleasure to be here with you again, this time to discuss fallacies of weak induction. Unlike fallacies of relevance, the premises of the argument of a, that commits the fallacy of weak induction are related to the conclusion, it's just that the evidence that they provide for the conclusion is weak because of one kind of an error or another. And it is those errors which we will be discussing today. The first fallacy that I want to talk about is called an appeal to an unqualified authority. Now, often, appealing to someone who is a qualified authority could be a good way of making an argument. But with this fallacy of the appeal to unqualified authority, the arguer cites an authority who is unqualified, or cites an authority who's qualified, but who's working in a field in which experts have no consensus on the matter being addressed in the conclusion. So, an example of the first kind of situation might be something like this. President Ahmadinejad of Iran says that the Holocaust never happened. Therefore, the Holocaust never happened. Well, this would be an appeal to an unqualified authority. Uh, because being the president of Iran does not make you uh, an expert on the history of the Holocaust. Add to this the fact that there's a broad consensus, um, it almost goes without saying, but there is a broad consensus uh, among historians that indeed the Holocaust did happen. Now, the other kind of case uh, might be one like this. Carl Sagan says that there is intelligent life elsewhere in the universe. Now, Carl Sagan was a well-respected astronomer and scientist who wrote extensively on this very topic. Uh, and yet, this would still be an appeal to an unqualified authority because there is no consensus among well-trained astronomers and scientists as to the issue at hand, as to whether or not there are intelligent beings uh, like ourselves in other parts of the universe. So given that there's no consensus in the field, I can't appeal to Carl Sagan's opinion and use that as good evidence for the conclusion that there is intelligent extraterrestrial life. So that's our appeal to the unqualified authority. And again, there are two ways in which an appeal to authority can fall into this fallacy. One is if the authority is not qualified. The second is if there is no consensus among qualified experts in that field. Now, the second fallacy of weak induction that I want to discuss is the appeal to ignorance. With this fallacy, the arguer base basically says, nothing has been proven about X, and then gives us some definitive conclusion about X. Uh, and there's two ways in which this can go. Uh, the appeal to ignorance can say, no one has ever disproven X, therefore X is true. And no one has ever proven X, therefore X is false. And the reason this is a fallacy is there is a difference between something being the case and us being able to prove that it is the case. Many matters of fact fall into the category of, um, of things for which there is more or less evidence, uh, but, but uh, not uh, substantial proof. So, for instance, someone might say, Throughout history, no one has ever proved that there is a God. Therefore, God does not exist. Well, this is an appeal to ignorance. Uh, it may be the case, though this is disputed, that no one has ever proved the existence of God. There are, have been a number of proofs uh, of the existence of God throughout history that many intelligent people do believe are successful. But even if no one has proven the existence of God, it is still certainly possible that God exists. This is especially true given the fact that God, by most definitions, is uh, a being of, uh, is a necessary being uh, who is infinite in his nature um, and a, a being who uh, would be very hard, perhaps, to, to uh, prove. Um, in order for God's existence to be provable, it would have to be the case that God in, uh, designed us in such a way as our creator that we would be able to prove it. Well, that's not necessarily the case. So the fact that no one has proved that God exists 
does not um, does not uh, uh, lead us to the conclusion that God does not exist. Um, someone might we might give an example that goes the other direction. No one has ever disproved the existence of ghosts. Therefore, ghosts exist. Right. So someone someone could say, look, I you know I I really believe in ghosts. I haven't seen any disproof of it, so I think that ghosts exist. Um, this also is an appeal to ignorance. Um, just because no one has disproved the existence of ghosts does not mean that ghosts um, uh, exist. Uh, it is very hard to absolutely disprove the uh, existence of something um, because there could always be some place you didn't look or some place that, that um, uh, or some mode of inquiry that you did not explore. All right, so, so no one has proved X, or no one has disproved X. Neither of those are good premises for a, definitive, a definitive conclusion about X. Now, there are some exceptions uh, to uh, this fallacy. For instance, if a thorough search of qualified persons turns up no evidence of a certain phenomenon, then we can conclude uh, that the thing does not exist. Um, so, for instance, uh, you might say the um, um, you know, the surface of the moon has been exhaustively explored by 20 missions, uh, and um, including scans of the surface and for miles underground, and no one has discovered any intelligent beings living on the moon. Therefore, intelligent beings are not living on the moon. That's actually not an, an appeal to ignorance because the way I put forward the argument, we have 20 different uh, teams, we've got all kinds of sensors, every square inch of the moon's been covered. Well, we can, we can conclude uh, that there are no intelligent beings besides those of us who go there uh, on the moon um, because it's a finite area, it's been exhaustively searched, and it is... Um, uh, it's reasonable to suppose that, that the search would have turned up evidence of intelligent beings, but it didn't. So if you have a thorough search of qualified persons, then this uh, appeal to ignorance fallacy does not apply. I might say, um, you know, my bedroom it has a finite area. I don't know, 400 square feet or something like that? That's probably about right. Eh, it's not that big. But uh, let's say it's 250 square feet. Um, and I, I go in there and I look and I determine there is not a fully grown Indian elephant in that room. And I give the argument. I just looked in the room, I searched, I never found evidence for the existence of an Indian elephant in my room. Um, therefore I conclude there is not one in there. That's a perfectly good argument. Because if there had been an Indian elephant in my room, fully sized, fully grown, I obviously would have seen it. That search would have been sufficient. Okay, so uh, those are some of the exceptions uh, to uh, the, the rule. Another exception is courtroom testimony. Uh, we do believe in this country and in many other countries that a suspect is innocent until proven guilty. So it is legitimate in a courtroom to say, um, no one has proven that my client committed this murder, therefore he is not guilty. Uh, so that's a special case, but in all other cases in which uh, a thorough search of qualified persons has not been done, then it is illegitimate to argue in this way. All right, appeal to ignorance, nothing has been proven about X, and then some definitive conclusion about X is, is made.